Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be, and welcome to day two of the Black Hour. I'm your co-host, Dr. Abdelmalik Bull, alongside my colleagues, Professor E. Handy and Katrina Linden. Today is brought to you by the generous contributions of following sponsors, the Community College League of California, the Foundation for California Community Colleges, Ed Quiddy, and the William and Lynn Pollan Foundation. So yesterday you heard from thought leaders and the very upper echelons of leadership in our educational system. Former Obama Secretary of Education, John King, appropriately diagnosed the three pandemics our Black students are grappling with. The pandemic of COVID, economic, insecurity, as well as racism. Chancellor Oakley dared us to be unapologetic and Trustee Haynes encouraged us to take advantage of the moment in a sense of urgency because now is that moment. Doctors Bush, Cooper, and Harris reminded us of the late great philosopher Christopher Wallace, also known as Biggie Smalls, that more money, more problems. And that our systemic and systematic design is one that's set up to be separate and unequal. Dr. Bush also reminded us to make that collect call because those checks have been bouncing for a while. So today, today's about our why, the students. They inform our what and they inform our how. What programs, what policies, what budgets, how we can support them. They also inform our how, how to improve pedagogy and practices to, pro to provide a clear path to success on their expedition of excellence. And speaking of expedition of excellence, even the music today that you heard was composed by Mike Wilson, an Emoja transfer student from Diablo Valley College to San Francisco State. As well as these t-shirts that we'll talk about a little bit later were also designed for our phenomenal students. We'll have the chat box open for comments, but make sure to ask your questions in the questions section and out in the comments to our directed esteemed speakers. So that being said, I wanna turn it over to my colleague, Professor E. Handy to talk about our social media plug. E. Handy. Thank you so much for that wonderful intro, Dr. Bull. Really appreciate that comment. And yes, today is all about the students. So students, we know that you're active on the social media sites. Well, guess what? The Black Student Success Week is also too active on the social media sites. So we would like you to talk to us, engage with us on all social media platforms. That is uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and you know what? If you see any professional on here today, go ahead and add them to your LinkedIn profile. And if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, you need to get one. Use the hashtag Black Student Success, hashtag Black Student Success Week, hashtag the Black Hour. It's important that you do tell the world what you're engaged in. It's important that we let everybody know that we're here to stay and we have a voice. So please, again, engage with us on the social media platforms. Also, if you have a question, as Dr. Bull said, please put it in the Q&A and engage with us on the chat. Let us know where you're from, what school you're representing, any themes you're taking away, and any questions that you have. At this time, I wanna give it back to my brother, Dr. Bull. Thank you, Professor Eric Handy. So today I have the uh, phenomenal opportunity to introduce a thought-provoking leader within our system and outside of our system. Under her leadership as the president for the Campaign for College Opportunity in 2010, she led the historic effort to reform that makes it easier for college students to transfer, known as the Associate's Degree of Transfer, ADT. Since then, over 150,000 California students have earned the degree. And in 2018, the UC system announced a formal MOU with the California Community College System to provide a UC guarantee pathway. Michelle Sequeiros has advocated for millions of additional state dollars to expand student enrollment and student success funding at our community colleges, CSUs, and UCs. She's also advanced legislative efforts to increase access to Pell Grants, protect Pell Grants funding, support undocumented students, promote college readiness, prioritize community college student success efforts, and reform remedial education. Across all these priorities, she signs a bright light to the persistent inequities by race, ethnicity, income, and calls on all our college leadership and policymakers to address them. In her 15 years of the campaign for college opportunity, 11 as president, she has built a strong, independent, and influential organization 
by raising over $21 million, assembling a team of experts and leaders in the field, championing major budget appropriations, securing historic higher education legislation, and establishing a broad and influential network of over 12,000 coalition supporters. Under her direction, the campaign has released powerful higher education research, including prominent reports on college access and success rates, the lack of diversity among college leaders and faculty, the powerful return on investments for spending by the state in our colleges and universities, and the need for major improvement to close racial ethnic gaps, fix transfer, and reform remedial education at our colleges. Every day she's motivated by, this, by the many students who are working hard to reach their educational and college dreams. Michelle has a bachelor's degree in political science with honors in Chicano studies from Pitzer College. And I won't hold this against her, but she's got her master's in urban planning from UCLA. So as a Trojan, I'm not gonna hold too much against her because she produces phenomenal work. It's my pleasure really to have with us a person that not only lives that life, but uses radical research approaches and pushes all of us to our core and our consciousness. She serves on many boards, including the Pitzer College alumni, um, she sits on the, the Alliance for College Readiness. Um, she was actually appointed by Senate Pro Tem Leader Tony Atkins to sit on the Student Center Funding Formula Oversight Committee, and she previously served on the California Student Aid Commission. So without further ado, please welcome our colleague, our soul sister, Michelle Sequeiros. Dr. Bull, thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Oh, good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you are. Dr. Bull, can I take you everywhere to introduce me? I, I'm so appreciative of being here with all of you today, of always uh, fighting to support our students and putting them first, and of course, of celebrating Black excellence. As, as a thought leader, I am always humbled and grateful for the incredible leadership and expertise that I've been able to benefit from for many, many years, including many of you who've organized this incredible week and its programming and more than that, um, who do the hard work and are in the fight every single day. Um, as uh, Perry said during the Oscars, uh, who always are ready to meet folks in the middle to do what is right. Um, I've been thankful that amongst um, the many folks that continue to educate me, to help me grow and become better at the work that I do, uh, that it includes Dr. Keith Curry at Compton College, Dr. Frank Harris, so many of you, again, that have put this work on. But today, I really want to just say a special thanks and gratitude to Dr. Luke Wood, who sits on my board of directors, who many of you know in his many, many hats, um, is a leader at San Diego State University, an incredible uh, thought partner, and really who wrote the most um, beautiful, compelling, heartbreaking piece um, in light of the conviction of the murderer of George Floyd last week in the San Diego Union Tribune. If you haven't had a chance to read Dr. Wood's play, um, piece, I strongly encourage you to. Um, he teaches me every day and I am honored um, to be uh, a student of so many of you and his included. Um, today, I get to talk to you about something that I'm incredibly passionate about. And that first and foremost is that belief that all students have the ability to succeed if they're given the opportunity. And certainly that opportunity is especially critical for our black students across the state of California and across our nation. I, at my core, believe that without intention, without a plan, without a process of holding folks accountable, we will never achieve the kind of uh, broader expansion of this opportunity for all of our students. And so I know that you join me in that belief. At the Campaign for College Opportunity, we have been focused on increasing the number of students who are prepared for college, who get the opportunity to go to college, and just as importantly, who complete college. In California, we are home to the fifth largest 
Black American population in the country. Over 2 million Black Californians live in our state, and our state cannot succeed, cannot thrive, nor can it be in a morally right place without ensuring opportunity for all of our residents, including and especially our Black Californians. The great news is that more Black California students are graduating from high school than ever. More are completing the A through G requirements than ever before, and more are going to college. So those are the really, really great news. The majority of Black Californians, as each of you know, attend a California community college. And so I'm going to just share a few slides to highlight some of the important research and data that we have produced. Um, I hope the, yes, here we go. Um, so first and foremost, I think many of you are familiar with our publications. We love to do research and data analysis. We try in every single occasion to disaggregate that data by race and ethnicity and gender uh, where possible. We recently released an updated report that's part of our signature series, the State of Higher Education for Black Californians. And just, and, and just on the heels of that report, in collaboration with our friends and allies who've put this amazing event together, uh, Follow the Money. Those reports you can see, I think, on the link tree and you can access them on our website at collegecampaign.org. Um, the intention of our research is always to highlight the facts, to celebrate the amazing progress that we are making, to identify some of those best practices, and also to unabashedly and unapologetically push for more and push for better. Um, and that is pushing our state leaders when it comes to funding higher education, when it comes to financial aid for our students, it's also pushing our colleges and campuses to ensure that they're with intention, with plan, and with accountability, um, supporting our students to success. And as I've shared, and as all of you know, community colleges are critical. They're critical to the future of our state. They're critical as an entryway of opportunity for most undergraduates in California. And in the next slide, you can see exactly why community colleges are so important. Of all Black undergraduate students who go to college in California, more than two thirds of them attend a California community college. You can see how very few of them, unfortunately, attend a University of California. And how 9% uh, attend a California State University. You can also see 18% attending a private for-profit college, um, a statistic that's concerning for many, many reasons. If you can click. The reason the community colleges are so critical is because this is where students start. And the majority of students who enroll in a community college are enrolling there to transfer. And yet after two years, only 3% of black students do. After six years, only 36% of black students transfer. Um, nowhere near the amount or the number who need to. In the next slide, you can see um, based on sort of the California population where uh, we have, um, Black representation in higher education. That line that you see across is sort of, if we were at representation in terms of the population of Black Californians, we would expect to see at least 6%, I'm in favor for more, in each of our higher ed systems. Here you can see that Black students are underrepresented at the CSU, and at the University of California and even at private independent colleges like the Claremont Colleges, like USC, like Stanford, um, and overrepresented in private for-profit uh, for colleges. In the next slide, I, you know, I, I wanna put this out there, not to read all of this to you, but really to talk about the importance of the associate degree for transfer. 
As Dr. Bull shared at the very beginning, over 11 years ago, the Campaign for College Opportunity with then State Senator Alex Padilla, now U.S. Senator Alex Padilla, championed the associate degree for transfer in the legislature. And it was a response to uh, a convoluted transfer system in California that makes it very difficult for community college students to know if the classes they're taking are the right classes, if they're going to transfer, and just as importantly, are they gonna earn a degree? In many cases, we were seeing on average more than 80 units being uh, accumulated by a community college student, and none of that adding up to enough units to transfer, which should be 60 on an average um, an appropriate sort of requirement, and not even adding up to an associate's degree. Can you imagine spending that much time at a California community college, earning over 80 or 90 units and walking away with nothing? maybe not even being able to transfer. The associate degree for transfer was an effort at putting students in a path where it was clear, and it was an effort to ensure time to degree, a 60 units at the community colleges, 60 at the Cal State, a guaranteed admission if you completed the ADT requirements into a CSU campus, and ensuring that you would complete your bachelor's degree from the CSU with 60 units. Really critical um, that this pathway is available to students. And we're glad to celebrate that close to 300,000 students, if you can please click, um, have already earned an associate degree for transfer. And just as we celebrate that this has made the pathway better and stronger, we still have a long way to go. In the next slide, you will see a few of those data points in particular because we love to disaggregate this data by race. We see that overall of students earning associate degrees, 48% of community college students are earning an associate degree for transfer. But when you look at Black um, graduates with an associate's degree, only 37% are walking away with an associate's degree for transfer. And that's important because now we have these MOUs with, you know, historically Black colleges and universities with uh, independent colleges and universities. We're pushing the UC to ensure greater access to students that earn the ADT. So we know we have to close these gaps that continue to persist. In light of what we have to continue to do better, we also see some troubling trends that only a third of black transfer students transferred to a CSU campus in the fall of 2018. And mind you, this data is sort of pre-COVID. Um, so we still don't know um, what these data points will look like um, in another year or two. And obviously the pandemic has had a huge impact on all of our students and especially a disproportionate impact on Black and Latinx and Indigenous communities where COVID pandemic has hit incredibly hard. But if you look at these figures, it's really concerning to see um, where Black students are going in comparison um, uh, to others. In the next slide, please. You can see that some of the good news is that, again, since 2015, so just in five years, we've seen a huge increase in the number of Black students at our community colleges that have earned an associate's degree on a guaranteed path. That means that they're guaranteed admission into the CSU. Um, if you look at the 2020 column, you can also see that there's a large number of ADT earners that are not in a guaranteed path on the CSU. And what that means is simply that maybe they changed their major, maybe they got into the CSU in a different major, but because it's not aligned, they may, in fact, are probably going to take more than 60 units. This may be totally justifiable, but we've got to dig behind this because it may not be. What we want to see is that the growing number of students are on an ADT, are on a guaranteed path. And this has to do with how do we support our CSU campuses to ensure that they're providing the spaces um, that we need them to provide for the students um, that have fought hard to earn this, these degrees. And then you can also see that 
43% of students um, are trans have transferred without an associate's degree at all, um, which may be just fine. Um, but, you know, when you look at statistics on how many students end up not finishing the BA, that's also a bit concerning. Um, next slide, please. So this just gives you a picture of um, how many students are transferring to the UC campus. And, you know, I could tell you 9% and you might think, well, that doesn't sound terrible. But when you see that the raw number is only 574 black students in California transferred to a UC campus, I think that makes all of us feel quite dismayed. 574 at all UC campuses. Um, unacceptable is the only frank answer to this. In the next slide, you can see that um, over a third of black students are transferring to for-profit colleges and universities. Um, a greater number of black community college students are transferring to for-profit campuses instead of a CSU or a UC. Just sit with that for a second, especially when we know the cost of for-profit colleges, both in terms of out-of-pocket cost and future out-of-pocket debt and devastation in terms of loans um, that students are required to take out. And also in terms of quality, there is a lot of concerns, a report we released in December in conjunction with Third Way National, looking at the return on investment and the personal payoff of uh, colleges and universities, unsurprisingly, finding that our public community colleges, our Cal States, our UCs provide an incredible value. For every dollar that you spend there, you're gonna recoup that dollar, likely in less than five years once you graduate. That is not the, the same story when it comes to for-profit colleges and universities. So very concerning on that front. Um, so I think there's, this might be the last slide if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So um, just as I wrap up, all of this information and the data is available for you. It will be shared with you, the reports on the um, state of higher education for Black Californians, along with follow the money and the personal payoff report, which I cited. You can find all of them on our website and in, in the link tree here. Um, but I just want to end with saying we, we love this data. You can take the PowerPoint off. Um, we love the research and the data, but the research and the data only matter if we all do something with it. If we all get in the middle and advocate for black students, if we all ensure that those practices that are working at our campuses, um, that we expand those, that the ones that are not working, we stop doing those. But very specifically, we always have recommendations. Right now, we're supporting legislation to strengthen the associate degree for transfer, AB 928. We urge you to join us in supporting that legislation. We want the ADT, the associate degree for transfer, to become automatic for students to enroll in that pathway unless they choose to opt out of it. We know that automatic A through G access in high schools has been critical to expanding the number of students of color, Black and Latinx, low-income students in particular, who complete A through G and can even be prepared for a four-year university application submission. So we know that if we can default students into the associate degree for transfer, that will be good. We also know that we need our institutions to work together across systems. We need our community colleges and our Cal State system and UC to come to the table and strengthen transfer across the board. And that legislation would incentivize that as well. So we urge you to support that. We believe that we need to push our governor and our college leaders to set a goal that 60% of Black Californians should receive some high level credential degree, including a community college associate degree or certificate and a bachelor's degree. All Black Californians, 60%, we know that a great majority of adults have gone to college who are Black in our state and have left 
without a degree. So efforts to come and pull students back and give them access and give them a welcoming environment. And I can't leave without saying, we have to ensure that our campuses are a welcoming environment for all of our students. A welcoming environment that ensures that they can see themselves in their faculty. And as you all know, we have long beat the drum that the diversity in hiring at our colleges and universities is insufficient. It's inadequate. It is not anti-racist. And until we ensure that our campuses hire uh, experts from our own communities that can teach our students that look like them, that understand their experience, we are not going to create the kind of welcoming environment that we know our students deserve. Um, so with that, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, joining us as we continue to advocate to strengthen transfer in California. And I look forward to being in the middle with each and every one of you. Wow, thank you once again, uh, Michelle, for sharing those powerful data points and for always advocating for Black student success and the success of all California students across the state. It's such an honor to work alongside you at the Campaign for College Opportunity. Um, it's now my pleasure um, to introduce Dr. Aaron Azu Settle, Partnerships Relation, uh, Relations Coordinator for the California Community College's Transfer Guarantee Agreement to the HBC Project. Um, Dr. Azu Settle earned her bachelor's degree in psychology and Spanish from Fisk University and her PhD in counseling psychology from Texas A&M University. She's passionate about student success uh, and HBCUs. In 2017, Dr. Azu uh, Settle joined the California Community College's um, Transfer Guarantee Agreement to the HBCU project and currently serves as the Partnership Relations Coordinator. In her role, she develops and maintains relationships with key administrators and faculty at the 39 partner HBCUs and supports the students that transfer to the HBCUs. She is honored to witness the next generation and legacy of HBCU graduates. Um, we're excited to have you here today, Dr. Azu Settle. I'll pass it over to you to present and then to lead us into a student panel discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much for that introduction. Okay, you can go ahead to the first slide, please. So a bit of background and history on the um, California Community College Transfer Guarantee Agreement to HBCUs. Uh, the California Community College Chancellor's Office considered this project uh, back in about 2014-2013 due to the local impaction um, within the Cal State University system and the UC system um, where, you know, students were ready to transfer, but there were not enough space for them at those institutions. And also just a general desire to have the additional transfer pathways uh, for students, for our California Community College students. Uh, there had been some uh, agreements between individual California Community Colleges and uh, HBs and certain HBCUs. However, there was no overarching pathway uh, or pipeline for all California Community College students. And so luckily uh, we had the ADT, the associate's degree for transfer already in place. And we utilized that as kind of that template for a program level um, articulation and seamless transfer from California Community Colleges to uh, our HBCUs, our partner HBCUs. So utilizing some of that I get C and CSU general education courses as well. So that laid the foundation for the project. And so here we have the requirements. So students can at any California community college can access this transfer pathway in one of two ways, by completing a transfer level associate's degree with at least a 2.5 GPA or higher, or um, by not completing a, an associate's degree and having at least 30 transferable semester units. And again, that 2.5 GPA or higher. So what we consider those transferable units, as I mentioned before, I get C, CSU or UC uh, general ed courses. 
And so here we have our list of 39 partner HBCUs. Um, and all of these campuses are in, located in the South, the East Coast, um, some of the, the Midwest as well. And it's a combination of uh, private campuses, public universities, um, small campuses, large campuses, small meaning um, anywhere from 400 total students to larger campuses um, up to maybe 10, 15, 20,000 students. In, area, in rural areas, the metropolitan areas, suburban, small towns, big cities. Um, so really there's a place for any student, any type of environment that they feel that they will be successful in. So some data that we, uh, we engage in some research with Howe and Associates over the last couple of years, looking at the National Student Clearinghouse data to identify um, how were our students transferring academically between having a degree, no degree, the specific type of degree. Um, so there were about 22 HBCUs that we uh, utilized data on, collected data from, from the beginning of the project in 2014, 2015, up until about 2017, 2018. And so from that data, there were 314 student, California Community College students served. And of those students, 205 had transferred with no degree. And then we see here 84 transferred with um, an, a traditional associate's degree and 18 transferred with an associate's degree for transfer. So this uh, 18 number looks pretty small in comparison to, you know, those 314 students served. But also if we consider the timeline for when the data was collected and the, the time pr frame that we were looking at compared to um, how long the ADT had been in place and been gaining traction across our California community college campuses. Um, if we look at that data now more currently with 2019, 2020 and 2021 data, we'll see some increases with the completion of an associate's degree as well as ADT. So an exciting project that our team has been engaged in, in you know, helping to more fully support the ADT in conjunction with working with our partner HBCUs is um, a degree match process. Um, so our team reviewed the ADTs that are offered here in California in comparison to the bachelor degrees that are offered in, at our HBCUs. So looking at those, um, those courses and identifying potential matches, we then submitted those matches to the partner HBCU so that their faculty, deans, provosts, their academic parties could review and either provide feedback and eventually approval for those ADT so that students could transfer with that ADT in business or psychology and they would know where they can transfer. And so eventually, um, hopefully sometime this year, students, will, students, counselors, anyone can search, will be able to search by degree um, so they can see where their associate's degree can seamlessly transfer and what those degree options look like because ultimately the goal is for the student with the ADT to complete their bachelor's degree in 60 years. Next slide, please. So now the moment we have all been waiting for. You've seen all the data, you've heard the narratives, but we want to always hear the student voices. So here are our panelists. And I will go ahead and share get started with that. So Hi, everyone. Turn your video on. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So my name, oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Erin. Oh, go ahead. So if you all okay. could just can you introduce yourself. Yes. Okay. So good afternoon, everyone. Sorry about all that. <laughs> I'm just really excited. My name is Erin Green. I actually ended up earning my ADT in psychology from Los Sedanos College in Pittsburgh, California. Um, transferred to Southern University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Graduated from there with my degree in psychology. And I'm ready to enroll at Turo University, the online program for marriage and family therapy. Should be done in around two years. So 
My goal is to practice marriage and family therapy in my community, serving, you know, those who are underserved and also trying to eliminate the stigma against, you know, mental health resources like therapy and counseling and things like that. Go ahead, Janelle. My name is Janelle Spells. I received my associate's degree for transfer in universal social sciences. I am now a senior at Wiley College and where my major is sociology and my future, my future uh, plans is to become a social worker initially with a license to be a therapist. Devante. Good morning. Good evening. My name is Devontae Wright. I'm from uh, Kansas City, Missouri. I attended NLL Valley Community College in Lancaster, California. I received my ADT. It was in a uh, business uh, business management, and then I am currently a student at a Kentucky State University, and I'm graduating this upcoming, actually May seventh, and I'll be a graduate, and I'll also be pursuing my master's and getting my MBA. Awesome. Greetings, everybody. My name is Jesus Murillo. I am a uh, graduate of College of Sequoias, which is a community college in Visalia, California. I got my ADT in political science and then transferred over to my, the illustrious Fisk University, which is an HBCU in Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm currently a graduate student at Harvard Divinity School, where I'm getting my master's of theological studies. Um, future career, to be quite honest with you, the sky is the limit. Um, as you will hear from these, from my amazing panelists is, you know, once you get into these spaces and you're able to kind of, you know, understand what you, what you're all about and what you want to do, it, the sky's the limit. But I'm just very grateful to be here with you all today. Truly, truly. Thank you all for those just amazing introductions alone. So how did you all learn about the ADT option and how did it help you when you transferred? So for myself, um, when I enrolled at LMC, the first thing, well, actually I enrolled before, at, you know, the beginning of the, the fall semester, I was actually part of their 2016 summer bridge program, which was really, really exciting. That was for, you know, graduating seniors. Um, and it kind of prepared us for college along with actually helping us to basically map out every single semester that we were supposed to be there for our degree to transfer. And so in being a part of that program, it really helped to like catapult me and also to lay out everything. So I knew which semester I wish I, should, I would be done at, along with giving me a really good roadmap of where I'm going, how long it should take and opening up those doors to like the resources that they have at OMC. So that really did um, start me off on the, on the right foot. And then also I would say, um, just my counselor at OMC, Ms. Faith Watkins, she did a really great job of staying in touch all the time. You know, when we're in school, it's like, I'm too busy to see my counselor. But at OMC, it was like, no, you're going to see us. You're going to, you know, get everything in order so that we can get you where you need to be. So the Summer Bridge, Summer Bridge Program of 2016, huge, huge help. And then in general, my advisor at OMC um, really helped to support provide a lot of guidance and a lot of um, encouragement. Like you can do it, you're here now, but you'll be out soon and on your way. Um, I would have to say for myself, I am a non-traditional student. Um, when I enrolled at Palomar College in 2017, I was part of the CalWORKs program. And so like Arisa was saying, um, they also gave us a degree plan that mapped out each class we needed to take in order to achieve our associate's degree. Um, and so through that is when we were discussing what my future career goals were. And so it was, it said it would be more beneficial for me to get my associate's degree for transfer than to just get my associate's degree. So then when I found out about this program, it made, it was another step further with the get your associate's degree for transfer and then transfer to your HBCU that better fits along with your degree plan and your future goals. Uh, 
Um, with me, I was a little bit different. I, uh, I started out at a PWI first, but then I transferred to Antelope Valley Community College. Uh, I transferred in with about uh, 45, 50 credits. And then um, when I got there, I actually talked to my counselor a lot. We uh, communicated because I played football. I played football. So I was on the right track. And then when I got with the ADT program, they really, uh, my counselor and my academic advisor really helped me with everything and getting stuff situated with uh, sending out my credits, making sure my credits are transferable and making sure everything's right. So when I get there, I don't have any hiccups on, oh man, all my credits didn't transfer or I'm not, you know, struggling with, oh, well, these transferred and these didn't. So uh, I would say my academic advisor and counselor really helped me along with uh, trying to figure out where I wanted to go. And uh, Kentucky State was the right place for me at a HBCU. Yeah, for me, it was a very uh, auspicious situation. Um, being a first gen college student, I had no understanding of what uh, courses I needed to take. I didn't understand that there was required, what were units, what were credits. I thought they were the same thing. And then I thought they were different. I didn't know what they were. Um, luckily, I was able to get into a, um, a program at my community college, which was EOPS. And they had some amazing counselors that set up a student education planner. Um, and at the beginning of the conversation, they said, hey, look, uh, do you just want to get your associates or do you want to transfer? And I said, no, I want to make my mama proud. So I'm going to transfer to a four year university. And so within that, they set up that that student education plan. Um, and man, I'm grateful for it because it, it really lays out a foundation for you to kind of, you know, be able to see, OK, what do I got to do this semester? What about next, next, next? And within that, right, you're able to plan accordingly so you're not, you know, uh, um, towards the last part of your of your time at your community college trying to figure out, is this going to transfer? Is this is this valid or is it not? Um, so yeah, that was my experience with getting into the ADT program. Awesome, awesome. Uh, can you very briefly um, just kind of speak to some of the academic preparation in that transition from community college to HBC? Yes, so for my experience, I would say academically, I was very, very well prepared when it comes to the upper um, division, upper level classes that I would be, you know, going into after getting my ADP in psychology. So academically, very prepared, very ready to take on the HBCU, um, you know, education. And um, like credit wise, I was also prepared, but at the same time, it was kind of like, I'm thinking everything is going to go through, it's going to transfer over really easy, I won't have to do anything. That wasn't the case. It's just more of like sitting out with your advisor, step by step, okay, which classes did you take? Do they line up? And then going from there. So if I had known that in hindsight, that would have made the process a little bit easier. But since that was something for me to learn from, um, something I would hope you, you know, all of you and can take away from that is when you're ready to transfer, make sure you get in touch with the right people. Um, not only your advisors, but also just checking with your community college, looking at those classes. Um, and seeing how they how they transfer over in a perfect world of course you want everything to transfer over but sometimes you know we just have to work around that so it's definitely a great lesson I've learned to really advocate for yourself and be like okay well I know I'm doing all my you know my hardest work my best work so I need to make sure that come that shows through because I'm ready to transfer I'm ready to get this degree so I would say it's very important to get in touch with the right people I did feel very prepared um, the education quality at the at Los Sudanos and at the community college level, I think prepares everyone pretty well when we look and see like, and even like the availability and the resources of my campus of LMC was outstanding. So it really helped me in the long run. I have to say for myself, um, I came to Wiley with 75 credits and they only transfer 61. So that was kind of a shock because I also thought that as long as my gen ed was completed, I would be good. But then I was just told a couple of weeks ago that the problem with my transfer is that I had so many sociology classes from Palomar that when I came to Wiley, sociology major classes, I'm good. But um, it's hours, course hours for me is what I'm trying to make up now. 
so that I can graduate by next spring. Um, I feel like my testing with my assessments at the for math and English, me assessing so high kind of messed me up in the end because it freed up my schedule to take a whole bunch of other classes focused on my major. So when I transferred, they seem to not have ever seen that before. So it kind of made my advisor and the registrar have to work a little extra to figure out how can we get her to her bachelor's degree, but yet not make it seem weird, I guess, for financial aid to why I'm taking the classes that I'm taking. That's the only weird thing that's going on with me education-wise with my transfer. Okay, and sorry to just quickly interrupt, just wanna make, keep us on track for timing. Um, if we could just kind of go next to what are some um, words of wisdom, advice, again, briefly, that you have for any student um, interested or looking or in the process of completing an ADT, and also for those interested in transferring to an HBCU. And we'll, we'll kind of wrap up there. Um, okay, well, the first thing I would say is um, sometimes you got to get out of your comfort zone. You know, sometimes you got to do stuff where you may not feel comfortable in doing and you may not people around you may not have faith in you in doing it. But I would say do it. You know, it was something with me being from Kansas City, uh, Missouri. I'm a Midwest kid. You know, I went out to uh, ABC knowing like this is a big opportunity for me. Uh, not, only, not only just playing football, but at the end of the day, I want to get my degree. So when I went out there, it was all about business. It was, you know, it was all about just doing what I had to do, keeping my head on the right track and just do it, man. Like I, one of the best experiences I have is being at HBCU. Uh, I've made some lifetime friends here. Uh, you know, it's not peaches and cream, you know, when transferring, trying to look at your stuff. But the main thing I would say back on the last subject was make sure you have a degree audit. If you have a degree audit, sit down with your uh, advisor, look over that, go over each and every class, you know, that you've taken, try not to retake classes that you've already taken. And, you know, that's the big thing, but I really encourage people, you know, just to, for me, it's to get out of your comfort zone. Cause that's something I did. And man, it's one of the best decisions I ever made with my life. So I hope that it can impact everyone in this meeting's life as well. Uh, first and foremost, I just want to say, if you can go to an HBCU, do it. No questions asked, just do it. I promise you it is going to be one of the best experiences of your life. That's coming from someone that was accepted into nearly every single UC and CSU, including Berkeley, including Davis, including UC Santa Barbara. And I would choose the exact same decision again. Uh, going to Fisk University, my HBCU was the greatest decision I think I've ever made in my entire life. Uh, going to an HBCU, they, see you, they don't see you as a number. You're not some uh, component to a greater scheme. You are your own individual, and they're going to they're going to do everything that they can to make sure that not only do you thrive within that realm, but then you're going to be prepared to go on into the outside world and thrive out there too. So regardless, go to an HBCU. You have the opportunity to. Um, some pieces of advice that I would give every single student here today is simply the fact that if it's not challenging, you're not in the right path. I want you to understand that because a lot of the times we can get very complacent within our own lives. And I want, I want you to understand you're not growing unless you're challenging yourself. You know, when we're working out, when we're tearing the muscles apart, it's growth right there. OK, so you need to go out there, challenge yourself, do things that you're not comfortable with and really push yourself. The second thing is for you to look at every single op obstacle in your way, every single challenge as an opportunity. And I say that with a little bit of, 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 of reservation for the reason that when you're pushing yourself into these different directions and you're really challenging yourself, that's what's gonna offer you the best uh, reward at the end of the day. Take everything one bite at a time. Don't look at things that, as a grand your problem. Look at things from small micro things. What can I do here? What is in my control for the greater message at hand, for the greater thing that I want? If I wanna become a doctor one day, don't look at everything you have to do just to become a doctor. I want you to take one small step at a time and eventually you'll get there. Um, God bless you all so much. And I hope that I, I'm so excited to see what you all do with your, with your journeys. Yes, everyone has said amazing things. I have pretty much along the same lines, I would say um, it wasn't until I was like a sophomore at OMC where I was like, they have HBCUs. What's that? Like, 
I didn't even know about them because, you know, in high school, no one ever really talked about that. UCs, uh, CSUs were pushed. So once I made that decision and I knew Southern was where I wanted to be, I just stuck to it. And a lot of people were like, oh, it's so far away. Are you sure you have to do that? I was like, I have to do it. <laughs> this is where I should be. And once I got there and finally transferred, I was like, wow, I'm never looking back. This is amazing. So also for me, it was one of the best decisions I could have ever made. Um, invaluable experience. You meet so many amazing people, a lot of connections. So I would just say, keep an open mind, um, embrace every part of being a transfer student. You know, a lot of people might be off doing other things, but as long as you stick to what you want to do and, um, you know, put the, put the work in, you will definitely like feel the reward and you'll be really thankful that you decided to do it. And even though it might get a little stressful, it might seem a little uncertain at times, just as life is, um, I would also say to think about it in terms of like, okay, yes, I'm transferring. Yes, I'm going somewhere totally new. You know, the South is very different, beautiful. Um, but take that as, okay, well, this is what I wanted. Um, and now I'm here. So, you know, just embrace that and be thankful for like even the littlest things because they all add up to that really, really, really great um, incomparable experience. Thank you. Thank you. Janelle, we can give you like 10, 15 seconds to bring us home. Okay. Um, again, as a non-traditional student, I have four sons. I'm a solo parent. Um, I did not let that stop me. I knew when I was at Palomar that I was going to move out of state when I was getting out of Palomar. Um, but research is the biggest thing. Research the city, research the school, research if you have to get a job, what your schedule needs to be. Everything needs to be together before you can enroll. Because I moved before I even enrolled in Wiley, um, just so I made sure that everybody's schedule was aligned and that there would be as little issues that I could foresee as possible. Thank you. You were strategic. Thank you, very much so. Thank you guys so much. And just um, a point to kind of highlight, I know Janelle had mentioned some issues that she had with having like 75 transferable units and only 60 or 61 being accepted. That's typical with most campuses. Um, they typically have a max capacity or limit of about 60 transferable um, units have been accepted. But thank you panelists so much for giving us just a snippet of your journey and your experience. Awesome. Well, thank you all for that amazing conversation. The chat is blowing up right now. And apologies if I didn't introduce myself earlier. I am Katrina Linden, the Legislative Affairs Manager for Campaign for College Opportunity. Um, I would love to ask you all, all the questions that are coming into the Q&A box. Um, but we'll just ask one more before passing it on to my colleagues to close us out. Um, and thank you everybody for staying on a couple minutes past the hour um, as we wrap up. So the question that came up a couple of times um, or some uh, recurring theme um, is some best practices, I guess, um, and support systems um, while you're getting your ADT. So Jeffrey Alexander asks, what would you say were the support systems and services that really kept you on your path? And Sana Polk, if you want to combine these questions, also asks, would you recommend meeting with EOPS counselors right away as opposed to waiting until you're ready to transfer? Um, so I'll, I'll let one or two people answer that. It looks like Jesus is shaking his head if he wants to take a stab at that. No, yes. Thank you so much, Katrina. Um, first and foremost, get, get into those, those counseling appointments as soon as possible. But not only that, try to go with multiple counselors. Right. Don't just go with one and then believe everything this person says. If you have some some questions, try going with a different one. Um, as it relates to EOPS, I've, I had an amazing experience. So I definitely recommend that you you if you can get into the program, please do so. And then just the last little thing, you are your biggest support system. You really need to take time and to invest in yourself. Obviously, you need to get surround yourself with people that really care about you and want to see you succeed. But at the end of the day, you are your biggest support system. And, and that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> I went through the CalWORKs program and they, other than the fact that we knew we had a timeline to get ourselves together so we can get off of CalWORKs, but EOPS was also um, like a backup, whatever CalWORKs couldn't cover, EOPS covered. 
Um, and that was a big support. My CalWORKS counselor, Christina Dauber, is the biggest cheerleader. She was always there when we needed someone to talk to, if we were feeling like we were struggling. She she still cheers me on today, and I'm not even at Palomar anymore. But it's just having that support. So that one person in your community college that knows you by name and is always like, here's my cell phone number, whatever you need me, call me. And just that other than, you know, your family, your friends, but at the community college, your counselor is literally the one that is your biggest cheerleader. Awesome. I think those were the two perfect closing remarks to close out of this panel. I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Eric Handy, for a special announcement. Thank you, Katrina, for the introduction. And thank you to all our panelists. Thank you to all the students for blowing up the chat, everybody that's on. We are going to try to stay on maybe five, 10 minutes over because just the conversation with the students is so important. But right now, I have the pleasure to bring in my brother, my big homie, my friend, a mentor, somebody who's really helped me in my professional and personal life, Mr. Herb English. Herb English has dedicated his life to creating conditions which have led to increased student achievement. His passion for fostering equity-based practices has transformed the lives of not just my own, but many students in the California Community College system. Herb is an innovative leader with nearly 17 years of progressive administrative and leadership experience in the community college system. He currently serves as the Vice President of Student Services at Barstow Community College. He has served on numerous colleges, districts, and statewide committees throughout his career and has been active in several community organizations, including the very own notorious African-American Male Education Network and Development, affectionately known as AMEND. He is my brother, my big homie, to give a big special announcement, none other than Mr. Herb English. Hey. Thank you, Professor Handy. I appreciate you. And thank you to all the students. Uh, this is my second year working with the student group. And I'm just amazed at all the accomplishments that our students can achieve. And most importantly, the way our students make sure to uh, recognize the folks that have really helped them uh, maneuver uh, their journey through the California Community College system onto the HBCU. But I wanted to surprise every student, and it was a collaborative effort. CCLC and the African American Male Education Network and Development, better known as AMEN, is going to provide each student with a $1,500 scholarship. That's right. $1,500 scholarship to every student on our panel today. We appreciate you. We want you to succeed. Uh, we want you all to achieve those graduate degrees. So thank you so much. I wanted to make sure that we acknowledge CCLC and the members of AMEN for recognizing that our students have financial needs. So every one of you will get a $1,500 scholarship. So thank you so much, Brother Handy. I'm not gonna to take too much time today, but I'm so proud of these students. I'm especially proud of Jesus Murillo, who was the president of the AMEND Charter at College of Sequoia. Congratulations to you all. Look at that. Big Herd comes through and giving out big money. It's again, students in the chat, you need to go follow Herb English on LinkedIn. He is an excellent resource. And her along that same path, because today is all about the student experience and it's all about the students, black student success. You might have seen us wearing these t-shirts that say the black hour, black student success, unapologetically supporting black student success. This t-shirt was designed by not only a DVC community college student, but also a, a man mentee, the very own Xavier Boykin. I know he's watching right now. Big shouts out to you, Xavier. And he designed, put these shirts together on his own time. And we want to award Xavier with a $1,500 scholarship as well today. So shout out, big Xavier. We are really about putting our, listen, this week is called Follow the Money. So we are putting our money where our mouth is. And our money is on the students. We betting on you. So please go order your T-shirt today. We've dropped the link in the chat. Thank you, Mr. Herb English. I'll kick it back to you to close this out. 
and kick it on to the next presenter. Thank you, Professor Handy. And it's very uh, exciting for me to announce our closing speaker. Uh, not only has she been inspirational in my life, but she's been inspirational in the students that we're speaking today, but many, many more that have left our system and have been able to go to the historically black colleges in the community college transfer agreement. So without further ado, Ms. Helen Young. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you, Herb English, as my brother from a mother, another mother. Um, we are just thrilled that you joined us here today. I hope that these stories from these amazing students inspires not just other students on this call, but our counselors, our faculty, our administrators to find space to have conversations about HBCUs and how this can be the perfect place for certain students in our system. HBCUs are not for everyone. We get that. But we need to have the ability to have the conversation. If your campus counseling division has not had an in-service by our staff, you need to send me an email, hyoung at elcamino.edu. This can be the most life-changing experience for any student. I just had a, a message from a student that asked me, um, said I'm Asian, would I be welcome at an HBCU? All are welcome. HBCUs is about that diverse experience. It don't get no better than an HBCU for many of our students. I think these students conveyed what we hope you would, would begin to understand the impact and the importance of these institutions. I see these institutions as pearls within the black African-American community. They are safe places, they are safe spaces. They are historic in their context and their importance to our, to our higher ed community. And we must preserve them. We must take care of them. And our contribution here in California is to send our best and brightest there. So please help us to help our students by again, having that conversation, ensuring your staff is, is aware and supportive of having these, again, these deep dive conversation and exploring the HBCU as an option, as a transfer for our students. Uh, again, we wanna thank you for, for um, joining us today. Um, tomorrow's event, if someone could put that up for us, um, thank you for joining us. Um, equity, uh, tomorrow is our equity and black representation in higher ed leadership. Please make sure you join us tomorrow. Please make sure you join us all week. These workshops and this black hour will just keep getting better and better. You won't regret one minute of spending time with us this week. Um, so we thank you. Um, Eric, if you'd like for me to stay on it, it, to, to answer more questions on the, in the q and I'll stay and do that. Um, but we love you. Um, from our team, the CCC to HBCU team, um, we just are grateful for the opportunity to again share our student stories with you and hopefully inspire you to explore those HBCUs. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, Helen. We're closing out. Uh, for those who are watching us streaming live on YouTube, the link for the black t-shirts are at um, our Instagram page at CA Black Students. You, you can grab it there. There's a link tree. We will also put it up on our YouTube channel as well. Again, we want to thank all the panelists. We want to thank, I want to thank my co-moderators, Dr. Bull and Ms. Katrina, and thank everybody for joining us. Please bring, come back tomorrow, 12 o'clock sharp, to continue Black Student Success Week. Hashtag the Black Hour. Tag us, tag us, tag us, tag us. And go get your LinkedIn, students. Peace.
Mm-hmm.